Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here. This video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! deck profile video. I literally just walked back in the door to my house from YCS Anaheim 2016. This is the first time I'd ever gone to a West Coast YCS and it is the first time I'd ever been West in the country any further than Texas. I'd never been to the West Coast before and like I said, the furthest West I've ever been before is Texas. So I went to YCS Anaheim, flew out there, had an amazing time, was there from Thanksgiving Day until... Tuesday night when my flight left after Cyber Monday, the Tuesday after Cyber Monday, and ultimately I had, like I said, an amazing time, met a lot of people, had a great time, did reasonably well in the tournament even though I did not get a top spot, at least I didn't bubble out like I've done in the past, and ultimately I played a deck that I really enjoy playing, which ultimately led to me having an even more fun time and a you know, more fun experience during my uh, weekend, but the deck I decided to play for the event was Mermails. I really love this deck. Um, I love playing Mermails. It's always something that I always go back to. I always like to play test with it in all its uh, various forms, and it was just the deck that I felt was right for me to play for the event. I knew I was going to Anaheim, but I did not have this deck anymore. I had sold my copy of it that I had, and then the copy that I had been borrowing, I had been borrowing from friends, but I ended up having to give them back as well. But I have to give a huge shout out to Desmond Johnson, who let me know a week in advance that I could play this deck, um, at least the major like core that he had for the event. And so that ultimately got me really hyped to go play at this event. I ended up finishing X2 at the end of the 11 rounds of Swiss. I ended up losing round 2 and 5, so I lost relatively early. But after losing round 5, getting my second loss, I did not lose again. And ended up getting 42nd place, unfortunately, due to some bad tiebreakers. So I didn't bubble out, I just ultimately got dicked over by Konami saying that I couldn't top. Uh, but this 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 felt like the right deck for me to play for the event because it's a deck that I'm the most familiar with. Like ABC has a really low um, like learning curve, and so I knew that wasn't a deck I wanted to play. And then Metal Foes, uh, just I couldn't get anything. I couldn't like I couldn't test it and play it the way that like I felt like I wanted it to be played. And Mermail is a deck that I'm very well versed with because I've been playing it off and on since it came out in 2012, and definitely very heavily earlier this year once we got Neptibus. So I was very familiar with the concepts and combos of the deck. So. I felt like it was just the right deck for me to play, and like I said, I almost got my top, uh, but bad tiebreakers said no. But anyway, the deck list is as follows. Three Neptibus, the Atlantean Prince, which is super standard. Uh, the one Deep Sea Diva. Two copies of Atlantean Dragoons. <laughs> and yes, they are mismatched, and I mean, I borrowed almost all of this deck. The only cards I did not borrow in the deck were like Instant Fusions and stuff. Uh, basically every non-engine card and the frogs and I had to go buy the diva like I had to I wrote my deck list down without having all the cards for the deck and then I just had to go buy and find the cards that I was missing <laughs> it was pretty bad it was pretty sketch um, I was basically in a rush finishing this deck list out but anyway for the rest of the Atlanteans one marksman and one infantry you don't really want multiples of these uh, if anything marksman might end up getting cut from the main to put the second infantry in the main and just side the marksman just because infantry has a lot more applicable like uh, a lot more like beneficial applications currently uh one mooling glaze because this card's amazing you're able to drop it turn one with like t with like a toad or two and you're usually just so far ahead in the game at that point uh triple abyss megalo triple abyss Tius for the big mermails you want all six of those you want to be able to yeah, you know, have discard outlets to get your plays moving to get your uh, dragoon searches started all that sort of stuff uh, two copies of guns to you know just be your a good solid discard outlet specifically especially for like swap frog and things like that, and then the OSHA package of OSHA Hild and Mander to make your double Bahamut shark and uh, double tree toad play live. That is a very very uh, very important thing. It's one of the biggest aspects that I don't see people running these cards, but these cards are a huge deal of like uh, of like how this deck just doesn't open bad that many times. Like because it's the deck, the only way this deck opens bad is if you don't get a starter card and. Teus isn't really a sufficient starter card without Dragoons unless you play these cards because then you're able to have you know Teus plus any level 4 Mermail or Aqua Spirit be double Bahama Shark, double Tree Toad. They're double totally awesome and ultimately it just is uh, it's very good for you from there because you just have a one card starter in the form of Teus. Even though it's not nearly as ideal as it would be if it was Teus Dragoons but I mean it's still something that gets you started. But Speaking of level 4 Mermails, two copies of Mermails Bis Pike and one copy of Turge to recycle resources. Honestly, this could probably be just as good as uh, just as good if it was like a third pike. Um, I didn't really miss the third pike very often, uh, but like, I mean, this, this could potentially... It offers more options in play, which is good, uh, but I don't think I ever actually resolved its effect more than once the entire weekend to add a, actually add a card back. Uh, so there definitely is that to consider, but... 
triple aqua spirit because you want to be able to you know summon level fours make bahamut sharks make dwellers make rank fours um and ultimately advance your engine which this card does and then the uh the best little package that this deck could have the triple swap frog and one ronin toten engine now i saw a lot of people that were building the deck for blinding second for this event because they felt like that was really strong and in all accounts it might be strong but they were not playing the toads and the thing is is that the frog engine is one of the biggest aspects of what makes this deck so good at going first and second i lost nine out of 11 die rolls over the weekend and going second having swap frog in your hand just makes you feel so safe because you're able to force through a totally awesome before you try to make any other plays thus making it a hard counter to cards like abc dragon buster and full metal foes alkahist and like even beatrice even blue eyes spirit dragon like you just have hard outs hard counters to these cards in the form of opening swap frog um, and just like two random waters with your Neptibus. And the thing is, like, if you're able to force through a play like that, your Neptibus or your Diva or whatever you were going to do is going to give you those cards back anyway that you just used for summoning your Swap Frog twice without utilizing your normal summon. So you have to you have to take that into consideration. But it is definitely the best little engine. I don't think I would build Mermel for going second without the Frog engine in it. Like, it's just that good. Um, and then the last two monsters in the main deck were uh, two copies of Max C just to be a hand trap. I felt like this was going to be really strong going into the event. And it was pretty good the entire weekend. Uh, like I said, I lost 9 out of 11 die rolls. So when I did draw it, it was pretty clutch. But that is all the monsters. That is 32 monsters. For the spells, there are only 7 of them. 1 for 1 to be an additional Neptibus. Triple Instant Fusion because this card is insane. This card is great. Uh, being able to Nord and back a Dragoons is huge. And this card is almost never dead at 3 anymore. Uh, because of the fact that when Totally Awesome dies, you could always just shuffle back Norden if you do have another Instant Fusion in your hand already. Or, we do have Rare Fish now. I did not play Rare Fish at the event because I could not get my hands on one. But, there could actually be room allocated in the extra deck for a copy of Rare Fish just to be your Instant Fusion target. Because there were a couple times during the day where I did Instant Fusion for Norden for zero effect. Um, and rare fish would have been great there, but we finally got the import of rare fish So like that's a water infusion target we can use which is actually relevant But anyway continuing on the last three spells in the deck are soul charge the ever powerful soul charge and uh, two copies of pot of desires Now this card was kind of iffy the entire weekend. I felt like it just made my deck stronger um, Like turn one game one or just game ones in general. Um, it did get sided out a lot um, I usually based off my siding plan uh, There would be like when I was going first in sided games there'd usually be one in my deck list so that I couldn't draw multiples, uh, but then like if I was going second, it was usually sided out because I was going to be naturally at six cards anyway. Um, it might not be correct reasoning, but it was definitely what I was just doing for the weekend. It seemed to work pretty well. It just seemed to be like a good side out card. So I don't think the deck necessarily needs this card to function. I just think it was really strong to play, um, and that's why I played it. But the only card to search off Megalo in this deck is Abyss Sphere. Use this as a trap. Use it as a defensive card. The way you use this as a defensive card is that you get it off your Megalo and you try to end your turn with uh, with either heavy infantry in hand or if you have totally awesomes on the on the board you end with a heavy infantry in grave is fine and then you negate something with totally awesome in that case and you'll add back heavy infantry but the main point is you want heavy infantry in hand so that you can flip abyss sphere on your opponent's turn and summon one of the level four mermails and then discard the heavy infantry as cost to activate its effect now this does negate the effect of the pike or turds that you summon but that's fine you can still activate the effect and pitch as cost so you pitch the heavy infantry turning it into a form of removal and uh, also, if you don't need to use it as removal on your turn, you're able to use it to facilitate rank 4 plays and things like that. And it actually just makes the deck very, very strong. But the extra deck is pretty, pretty standard. It's literally almost exactly the same, if not the exact same as Hoban's uh, extra deck from, uh, from ARG Charlotte the week before. One Leo, because it's really good. Um, a Tatsunoko to help facilitate the summoning of Leo, as well as Moulin Glaze plays. The Norden for the Instant Fusion. A Gaios, a Big Eye for the Rank 7s, a Utopia the Lightning, and a Utopia for the Utopia package. A number 101 Honor Arc, just because it's probably just... Castell is arguably better than this, uh, but this triggers Dragoons, so I felt like this was just better um, to like play in a vacuum. And then uh, one copy of Dweller, one copy of Engineer, which is definitely getting cut. I made this card like once all weekend, and even when I made it, it was literally just for space reasons. Um, it definitely didn't need to be made the entirety of the weekend. And then the uh, double Bahamut Shark and triple Totally Awesome uh, package. Just to be able to force these cards out in this deck is great. And the fact that you're adding back very powerful engine cards off of this card when it dies as well is also huge. Like this card just does so much for the deck now. Allowing the deck to actually reliably go first and actually be good is a very, very huge thing that... This is honestly what the deck needed because the deck was already naturally strong at going second. 
but going second 100% of the time in this format could be considered as just a, su a suicide mission. But the side deck was uh, very janky. The side deck I threw together literally last minute. Um, I wrote down cards that I knew that I had on me, and basically I was only playing with like a seven card side deck for the entirety of the weekend. Well, seven's a bit of a stretch, but definitely like nine or ten. There was like five cards I legitimately just never sided in. But starting off, uh, just two copies of Gamma Seal. This card wasn't very good um, against like ABC because they always tag out the buster um, in standby phase. Uh, so I really only sided this card in against uh, Paleozoics to out frogs and against heroes to out Dark Law if I played against them. But luckily I dodged all the heroes. Um, and like this card just never really came in for me uh, because I put it in against Paleozoics when I played that just so I could like tribute over their toad and not have to like deal with anything that would trigger traps. Uh, but ultimately, it just wasn't very good. A uh, second copy of Heavy Infantry. Like I said, this card might be going into the main, um, and the Marksman might be moved to the side. Two copies of Retaliating C. As I said, I was writing down my de uh, my side deck and my deck list before I even had any of the cards on me. I knew I just had these with me. I knew people were signing this against Metal Foes because it is really good against Metal Foes, but I forgot that it was a Macrocosmos for everybody. So I literally sided this in once. And it was cool when it happened, but it was it was just it was a card that I was like, okay, I'm probably never citing this in all weekend. But I did cite it in once, and it did actually win me a game. So I guess I guess that's worth. I guess it's kind of worth. But the problem is, is that you have to open this with a level four monster, uh, because like you have to open it with dragoons, pike, turge, any of those, uh, so that you can normal summon it and make a rank four to turn this off. Uh, but if your opponent kills it. Then, uh, then you get to search max C. So I guess that was kind of cool. But I mean, if you drop a turn one in an ideal world, you're you're not going to be searching max C because they're not going to be killing it. Uh, but anyway, uh, triple twin twister. Uh, these came in quite a lot, quite a fair bit because there's no second marksman in the side of that because that card's kind of kind of not that great. Like usually anything in the format that would be marksman would just be chained to the megalo or the neptibus. Like it would be like a dimension barrier or it would be a strike or something. So Twin Twister just seemed like the better option, and it really just was. Uh, two copies of Forbidden Chalice. Uh, this card was great. I sided in against Metal Foes so that I could like Chalice their Alkahis when they try to suck up my stuff, and that was really good. And then the side deck that I put in, the side that I put in every time I went first in a sided game, uh, was a side of Triple Strike, Warning, and an Emptiness. I sided these cards in every single sided game that I went first against appropriate matchups, and by appropriate matchups I mean ABC Metal Foes. Uh, those two specifically and uh, and I didn't put them in against mirrors when I went first although they probably would have been good there as well I did put this card in um, again I put these two cards in against the mirrors that I played when I was going first because warning can you know warning the Neptibus obviously strike doesn't get a huge amount of value unless you're hitting megalos with it but I mean I guess that is an option but by that point you're using totally awesome to negate the megalos anyway these are really the most high impact high value cards and so I was putting these in every single game that I was going first and it was great. I did not want them in my deck list for a die roll. Like I said, I lost 9 out of 11 die rolls. I am so glad that these cards were not in my deck list uh, for the first game because they would have been bricks. They're terrible going second. But every single game that I sided and knew that I was going first, these cards came in. Now, the reason I played Strikes and Warning uh, was because I just didn't have access to Dimension Barriers. If I did have access to Dimension Barrier, these four cards would likely just be three Dimension Barrier. Um, I felt like these cards, though, were stronger than Anti-Spell, specifically because they hit more matchups, they hit more cards, as well as the fact that Anti-Spell, your opponent can have an out to it in the form of, like, Twin Twister or something if you don't have Toads up, and also, like, in the ABC matchup, your opponent can still play under Anti-Spell, whereas if you're striking, like, Tsukiyomi or something, then they usually cannot play, or if you strike the Buster, you're so far ahead. There's things of that nature that ultimately just led to me thinking these cards were superior to the uh, Anti-Spell option but if i had dimension barrier like i said i probably would have played those just because that does arguably the same thing of just ending the turn and mermouse is a deck that can kill you if you give them a turn so there is that but anyway that is the deck list that i played i have to go return these cards to desmond at some point today so uh, i wanted to get this video done so i literally started filming it as soon as i got back in my house it is 2 30 in the morning right now and i am really tired so uh hopefully this video is not too uh, drawn out or slurry in terms of how uh, I'm pronouncing and enunciating my words or how I'm making phrases and sentences and sentence structure. But ultimately, I really enjoyed the event. I had a great time, met a ton of people. I'm going to be doing a more in-depth tournament report since I did as well as I did, even though I did put round by round uh, reports on my Facebook page, on my personal Facebook. If you're friends with me there, you saw those. 
Um, but ultimately, I will make a video talking about my round-by-round -round experience uh, at the event and ultimately the weekend itself, the extended weekend, rather. But met a lot of great people, had a great time, and that's basically all there is to it. But anyway, as always, guys, thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, do all the nonsense you usually do. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know what kind of content you want to see. Hit me up on Facebook with the link in the description, all that sort of stuff. And other than that, have a wonderful day. Thanks for watching as usual. Thanks for your time. And as always, guys, take care.